Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, September 2nd. It is 6.15 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run the video at 1.25x on your player. Okay, uh, taking a quick look at futures. I see a lot of green on the board. Um, uh, just, just marginally green, though, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2%. Uh, but green's better than red, so I'll take it. Uh, Nat gas is up 1%. It's been on a real tear. Actually, it's it's coming into a, a key resistance area. So um, I'm going to take a look at that uh, later today. There may be a trade setting up. Uh, macro, we've got jobless claims this morning. Uh, we've got a productivity number, and we've got factory orders. And then on the earnings front, we've got, before the bell, American Eagle Outfitters, Signet Jewelers, and Duluth Trading Company, DLTH. And then this afternoon, we've got DocuSign, uh, Broadcom, HP Enterprises, MongoDB, and PagerDuty. In the afternoon, so we've got we've got a mix there of uh, semis and bubble stocks and uh, software names in the afternoon. Now, last night we had some fairly top line names that didn't do so well in their earnings announcement. So I want you to write these tickers down. Chewy, C H W Y, Viva. V is in Victor, Edward, Edward, Victor, Vive, and then five below, F-I-V-E. All of those names were down 10% off of their earnings announcement. And uh, that's that's between 10 and $20 based on their stock price. So those are going to set up real well, either for active traders today that like to play that kind of setup, you know, a gap down and then see if they buy it up during the day, if it was an overreaction or if they take it lower today. For others, and this is personally the way I like to do it, is uh, wait for the setup on the second day bracket trade. So uh, trade it any way you like, but uh, those, those three names are uh, are going to be great setups for uh, uh, either active traders today or bracket trades going in the next week. Uh, moving into the uh, dollar index here, we remain below this channel. Now we're down testing the 50-day moving average here in green. And then we've got a, a bigger support level at the 200 down here at 92.20. So again, if you're uh, new to the channel, glad to have you. Spend some time up here. If you're new, looking at these different scenarios or regimes, if you prefer that name. But <clears throat> uh, we've been kind of using these to using these different regimes to position ourselves. in the different sectors that we think are going to be working or not working as the case may be. And of course, you'll find over in the show notes, a link to the blog site where you can drop in your email address and register for all the content and uh, get an invite to our trading room. That would be great. And here's just a little bit of detail on how that registration works. It's a double opt-in. So you'll get a confirmation email, uh, that you have to respond to before you're added to the list. So uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, I went through the oscillators. There's nothing predictive there still inside what I consider the normal range of activity. So nothing, nothing really predictive there. One thing I want to go over this morning uh, is the VIX. Remember, just a couple weeks ago, we had our, you know, our downtrend line 
and we had gotten to the point down here at support where we said, you know, historically speaking, when you get down towards 15 and a half, that's usually where, you know, that's the end of the road for the VIX crush. You know, there's a spike and then they bring it back in. And then we said down here, there's really nowhere to go but up. And we got that spike that uh, about, you know, the, the two or three day sell off. And then they brought it right back again. So now we've come full cycle to that point where we had the spike. They slammed the VIX back down. Now we're at 1611 and getting really close to key support on the VIX. And the reason I bring that up is, you know, now that we're down at support, that would lead you to believe that there's only one way to go and that's higher. Can they can they keep it pinned here, you know, down at the bottom of the range? Sure they can. They can they can do anything they want. But if you look back in the chart, that's not what really happens. I mean, here we had a little episode where they really brought it down, but that's really been the anomaly. If you look back at all the other places, it's started to creep up. So I bring that up for a couple reasons. One, uh, tomorrow we've got non-farm payrolls, right? And that could be a, a number that spurs some volatility. Why? Well, and I, I don't know what the number is supposed to be, so I'm just guessing. Say it comes in real hot, you know, 1.2 million, whatever it is, then everybody's going to be saying, oh, the Fed, the Fed is definitely in, in gear now. He's going to announce something in two weeks on, on tapering. You know, the job, job picture is getting, um, uh, accelerating, getting dramatically better, all that kind of stuff. So now we're going to announce tapering. Maybe the market doesn't like that too much. What if the number is really low? You know, 750, 500, whatever the case may be, you know, miss expectations by a mile. Then, you know, there's, what does that say about the economy? That'll be, you know, good, bad news is good news for the Fed. Maybe people think that, um, you know, that keeps the Fed at bay and they would get cold feet about announcing something in two weeks with, with a jobs number that low. Maybe he wants to get another data point for the sept, you know, push it out until October. Um, so that may be cause for volatility for a whole different reason. You know, big slowdown in the economy. Nobody's getting hired, etc. So I'm not smart enough to figure that out. All I'm, all I want to point out is tomorrow may be a a um, has the potential to be a volatile day, either to the upside or the downside or both, with the VIX down at the bottom of the range. And then also we've got a three-day weekend coming up uh, where the market's going to be closed on Monday. So if you were of the mindset that you wanted to buy protection, I would get that done today uh, because, of course, non-farm payrolls will be before the market opens. You're not going to be able to do that um, uh, you know, after the bell rings. So... I wouldn't buy VIX directly. I would, I would hedge out some of your positions. You know, if you're loaded with tech, then you buy some QQQ puts. If you're, you know, uh, you kind of got to know where you're positioned. If you're more in, in uh, you know, cyclicals, nothing to do with tech, then you wouldn't do it with the Qs. You'd do it with probably IWM or something like that. Um, and then carry that into 
uh, at least at least a week out, you know, the end of next week, which I think is the 10th. Um, or you can just go out, you know, into September, depending on how far you want to, um, you know, have that protection beyond. The other strategy is just clean up your portfolio. You might be loaded to the gills in longs. Maybe you say at the close today, okay, I want to back off my risk a little bit uh, for these eventualities, build a little cash up. I'm happy with with this core that I have here, but I've got some stragglers. I've got some more speculative names that I don't really need to carry over the weekend. You know, get through the weekend knowing, you know, knowing that you got your your trading book the way you want it. And then you're not terrified, uh, you know, Monday with Monday night futures, right? So get it to the point where at least over the weekend, you can sleep well at night knowing that you've got all your bases covered. So that's probably what what I'm going to do. I'm probably just going to, you know, raise raise some cash over the next uh, uh, some today and maybe some tomorrow. See how it goes. Um, but you can certainly buy some uh, protection with the VIX uh slammed at the bottom of the range okay what i want to do this morning is just run through the indexes and fat man names i think that's going to be plenty to keep us busy i am going to put together a little list of uh potential setups coming down the pike that uh that i'll do in a separate video maybe even make a blog post about it but i'm not going to be entering a bunch of new positions just for the reasons that I just said of heading into the weekend. But I still want to show you the setups because more than likely, you know, they're going to be there waiting for us on Tuesday. So I'll uh, do that later in the day or have it ready for you uh, tomorrow. So anyway, SPY two hour really didn't do anything. I mean, we had a nice open and then, uh, you know, kind of built on that in the day and then they brought it back in the afternoon as far as the pivots go, I don't see any changes from yesterday. I think uh, 451 is uh, is your pivot, and then we've got the midpoint of the channel, and then your your support layers below. But I think for today, uh, 451 is the number on uh, on spy. Uh, the one thing I did pick up on on the 30 minute chart is what looks suspiciously like a double top. You know, we came down, we made a double bottom, we came up and we made a, you know, we tagged that prior high, but then look at the divergences. The, the second top was at much lower uh, PPO and RSI levels. And that's usually um, that setup is usually indicative of a a uh, double top that's going to fail and roll over. Uh, I got to be honest with you, I did not really see that in real time. I wasn't really focused on spy, but I wanted to point out the technical structure just as a. Uh, as a uh, learning opportunity and then how you figure out a measured move off a double top is you go from high to low and in this case that is 0.4 percent and then the structure triggers if price comes down and breaks the prior low then you take that 0.4 percent from the breakdown point and that brings you down to like 449 what i would spec what i expect would happen is if this gap fills i think it would uh, find support here at 44950 so that's not a prediction all i'm saying is 
if this double top plays out and we lose ground today and this gap fills that I would expect price to come down to this 449.50 level. Uh, Q's two hour. Uh, uh, big gap up. Made marginal progress early in the day. And then the last two hours, they brought it back. Now, I don't have it penciled in here because it's such a, a thin little micro gap. You'll notice that there is still a few pennies between yesterday's. Well, I'll tell you, the previous close was 379.95. And the low of the day was 380.37. So there's a 40 cent gap here uh, between yesterday's close and uh, the prior open. So there's a 40 cent gap in here that has yet to be filled. Um, some people would say, you know, that's not significant. Others would say, yeah, it's got to get filled and it'll eventually get filled. I have no doubt. But I think I think the key this morning is simply to pivot off of yesterday's close at 380 and a half right here. Um, if it holds yesterday's close, I think you can be long if if. Uh, the opening bar this morning is red and they push it down. It may find some support here at 380. If it just keeps on going, it's going to go to this 378.50, which was uh, yesterday's or the prior day's low uh, on Tuesday, which was right here. So I think those are the I think those are the levels. And you can see it uh, a little bit more clearly here. Here's your little little gap. Uh, I've set the pivot at yesterday's close. So then we can just go uh, from level to level uh, as we always do. Um, you know, taking a look at the posture of the uh, indicators. Uh, not looking all that inspiring and, and that's what's going to happen when you got a real weak close you can see here that despite this big bar really the rest of the day it it really didn't do anything and there wasn't any momentum you know behind the move so let a little pop up and rolled over so what we really want to see is this thing to hold support here flatten this out and then turn up and of course we want to see rsi hold this 50 level otherwise if this rolls over and this drops much lower from here you're going to see that in price and get a little a little pullback here this morning um iwm managed to outperform again. It's It's been outperforming this whole time. Uh, uh, it's been a focus of my work, as you know, over the last uh, several weeks. It continues to grind higher. I think the ultimate destination, although there's going to be wiggles and wobbles along the way, I think it's going to come up here and uh, uh, tag the top of the box. That's been the modus operandi this whole time is uh, adventures from the top to the bottom of the box and then back again. So my whole thing is keying off this 224 and as long as 224 holds, the thesis of going to the top of the box is intact. If it drops below 224, then not so much. So let's look at the, uh, let's drill down. Um, what I said yesterday, and I don't know why this is, but they've had a penchant 
for selling the first bar uh, in recent days. And we said, you know, be ready for them to sell that first bar and be ready to buy it support. And that's, you know, it doesn't always happen this way, but it was the, that scenario played out perfectly. And it was just an awesome trade because you can see here, the first bar came right down into support at about 225. And uh, let's, uh, let's go over to the 30 minute chart here. That first 30 minute bar was right down to a level that we had marked. You had an opportunity uh, to buy it there. And uh, a number of guys in the trading room did buy it there. And, uh, and I hope you did if you're, you know, at home and you're, you're trading it. Uh, but then it was just basically straight up the rest of the day. And it wasn't a coincidence that uh, price came up uh, and just went a little bit beyond the pre-market high. And that's why I always say, if you're an active trader, it doesn't matter what stock, you know, if it's an index or any, any stock, mark your pre-market high and your pre-market low, you know, before the bell, because more often than not, they're going to find each during the open session, during the regular session, they're going to find those levels. And that's exactly what happened yesterday on IWM. So if you were able to get it, uh, you know, somewhere close to 225, you had a nice steady rise all the way up to 228, where it finally uh, found resistance and pulled back. So today, I've got the pivot set at like 226.75, right in that area. If it can hold that, it's open uh, to 228. Now I want to go back to the two hour chart. Um, uh, I think on this run here, you've got some resistance at 229. And then uh, above that, I think it can get uh, into the 230, 231 area. And that would be, you know, that would be a great result uh, either either at the close of today or the close of tomorrow. Uh, and remember what we always say, heading into a three-day weekend, the last two hours of trading on Friday will tell a lot about sentiment in the market. Who wants to be long over a three-day weekend and who has cold feet uh, do they sell it because they don't want to be holders or do they have confidence into the three day weekend? So anyways, um, this just continues to make steady progress. So, I mean, there's really nothing not to like about uh, IWM's price action. Uh, Facebook. Big bull flag. Breakout. Back test. So that's what we've got going here. I think as long as it holds the top of the flag today at about 381, the bulls are definitely in charge. Uh, I was asked yesterday what my target is, and I haven't penciled this in exactly, but I think uh, 395, 400 is going to be pretty darn close to this uh, measured move. So that's what it measured that what it that's what it measures out to be. What would throw water on that whole di whole idea? Well, if we came down here, it moved into the flag and then we lost the flag. So we've got a window here between uh, 381 and uh, 379. That flag is about $2 wide. Uh, I would certainly want the top of the flag to hold this morning and then proceed higher from there. If it came back to 379 and you weren't in it, I would certainly give that a shot there in the hopes that it would hold. It should hold. If it doesn't, 
then, you know, this whole thing would look fake and they could bring it all the way back into, you know, 375, 373, back to the breakout point. You know, that kind of thing has happened before. Um, so it's not out of the realm of possibility, especially if, uh, you know, non-farm payrolls or heading into a three-day weekend, if people get cold feet, they could certainly sell this down. So be aware of those levels. Uh, Apple had a disappointing day. Big move right out of the gate. Came up and topped out and then gave a lot of it back. Uh, back to the open gap from the uh, from the morning open. So for today, uh, that 152.50 needs to hold. Otherwise, it's going to fill this gap. And then I would imagine it come down to uh, this uh, 150.150 where the original breakout happened. See, we had a breakout here, gave it all back, back tested. Then we broke out again. Now we're back. So I was really hoping that this would hold and that would give it, you know, blue sky, legitimate breakout, you know, head to higher ground. Uh, we didn't get that. So now we've got uh, gap support here this morning. And then we've got uh, a lot of structural support here at uh, 150, 150. Uh, Tesla, 740 is the top of the gap. Uh, I've, got it, I've got it drawn a little different on the daily chart. I've got the gap going up to 740. I think that's the real, real number. It, at this point, it doesn't make any difference because because we we know clearly that 740 is a resistance point. It's held price in check for two days. So now uh, it's pretty simple. You get a you get a break above 740. Your target is 770, and that comes off of the daily chart. Uh, if it can't take it out, then the path to lower prices uh, is open, you know, back down to 720 would be your target. If this falls too much farther below, could come back here, find some support, and then, you know, try to take on 740 either tomorrow or next week. But in general, nice move. But now we gotta we gotta take out 740 to carve out higher ground. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Microsoft. We had another really strong open, and then they right up to resistance. We certainly know 305 is a key number, right? You know, look at all the touches and rejections. We had a um, we had a touch and rejection uh, Tuesday. And then we had a touch and a rejection uh, yesterday. You know, big opening bar, touch 305, and then they spent uh, the rest of the day uh, selling it back to 302. Now for today, 302 is a clear pivot. If it loses 302, it may come all the way back here to, to uh, uh, this 297.50 area you know, fill this gap, come back here, and then we would have a big, big trading range between uh, 297.50 and 305. If, this is a big if, if price did come all the way back to 297.50 uh, and it held, uh, that's, a, that's a real objective place to be a buyer. And then you're your triple whammy bazooka buy is all the way back at 295 because that's where the original breakout happened back here. Uh, that's not a prediction. Uh, it's just the technicals where the levels are. We either need a breakout above 305, a hold at 302, a hold at 297.50, or a hold at uh, 290, 294 and a half. 
those are the key levels on Microsoft. Uh, Amazon. Uh, some traders in the room. I mean, we talked about the other day, made a lot of money over these last few days. Uh, kind of a nasty close. Had two real big selling bars where price had come back into this open gap that was left this left uh, in the morning trade. That's why, again, in your in your technicals, whenever you have a gap open, mark your gap because whether it's you know in this case in the afternoon or two days from now, that's always going to be a target to fill. Um, you can see down here, you know, price never did come back, but at some point it will, and then we'll know that it's there. So anyways, I have uh, yesterday's open at 34.71. Uh, so we're a few pennies shy of that gap fill. So if it comes in here to 34.71 and holds, you can be long. Look for the look for yesterday's high. If that fails, probably going to come into 3440, and uh, that'll be the next layer of support. Uh, Google, very much like the other ones, uh, had a little fake breakout, broke out above 2910, gave a nice push, but then gave it back in the afternoon trade. Uh, at the end of the day, the pivot points exactly the same. 29.10, if it breaks above, I'd again be a buyer uh, and look for higher ground. If we pull back, probably going to pull back into 28.90 or 28.80 right here. Netflix. Uh, uh, had a beautiful, uh, beautiful run. <clears throat> Uh, coming from down here, had a very impulsive move right up to uh, 589. Uh, in fact, I sent a note out. That's that's a very big level uh, going over to the daily chart. I said if there was a breakout there to buy it, well, uh, it did break out, but it was fake, and then they sold it the rest of the day. So I actually took that trade. And then, of course, was um, uh, stopped out of it uh, for a loss. So, I mean, those things happen. At that point, the market was not selling off. It, it still looked viable and looked strong. There was a nice five-minute bull flag and gave a two-bar breakout, which I bought. Maybe you followed my advice and you bought it too. That's the way it goes. Uh, all you can do is take technical setups that look promising and always have a stop ready if it doesn't work out the way you planned. So what I've done here is lay on the fib retracements of yesterday's move. Uh, if it pulls back in today, you know, 579, 576, and 573 are your three FIB levels that you could see a retracement and then a reversal higher. So I would uh, pay attention to those levels. If we just break out this morning above 590, I would again be a buyer of that. And then uh, uh, semiconductors really didn't do anything all day. The uh, chart remains unchanged. Same pivot. 271 uh, needs to hold that for higher ground. Needs 272.50 to really move ahead. And uh, if it falls below, it can come down to either test this prior low at 269 or pull back into this uh, 268 area. I think uh, for the balance of the week, it's... Just gauging sentiment. Is it going to be? Is it going to be risk on? Are people still going to be willing buyers ahead of non-farm payrolls ahead of the three-day weekend? 
Are we going to, or option B, are we going to go into suspended animation where people aren't willing to sell, but they're not willing to buy either, you know, going into that print tomorrow? Or do people get cold feet today and bring it down? I think those, obviously, those are the three options uh, as they are every day. But I think with the three-day weekend and the non-farm payroll uh, print tomorrow as a catalyst, I think it puts a, a fine point on those options uh, today What you know, and pay attention to what scenario kind of plays out. And just as a reminder, uh, review your positions. We are at the lows on the VIX. So from a technical standpoint, we're getting to the point where there's nowhere for the VIX to go but go up. So probably a good time to review positions. If you're a guy that wants to put on protection, I would get that done today ahead of the non-farm payrolls, ahead of the three-day weekend. You just want to set your portfolio up in the next couple days so that you can you can have a nice, enjoyable weekend and you're not biting your fingernails <clears throat> you know, all afternoon and night on Labor Day because you're petrified of a gap down on uh, Tuesday morning. So let's leave it at that. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, if you're new to the channel or longtime viewers, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. It helps me in uh, Google searches. Also, leave me a comment. I'd appreciate that, especially if there's something that you want me to cover off. I will certainly be happy to do that for you. And uh, if you're new here, as a reminder, hit the subscribe button. Uh, go over to the show notes. Uh, hit the link to the blog site, drop in your e email, takes you five seconds, and then you'll be registered for all my content and you'll get a nice email morning, noon, or night. Whenever I send out content, you will get it in your email box. So let's leave it there. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.